and welcome to Significant TV. Today, our guest is Paul Eisenberg, CEO of Bringing Hope Home. Well, Paul, welcome to the show. Thanks, Fran. Great to see you. Great to see you. How are you doing today? Where's every, that energy that I Every day's see? a good day. I'm glad to be here. I love it. I love <laughs> it. Well, you know, the show is all about significant stories mm -hmm. from significant entrepreneurs. And when I went through, I won't say my Rolodex, but right. when I went really through <laughs> my network, you were one of the people that automatically popped up. Thank you. You've got a powerful story in terms of entrepreneurship. And I was wondering if you would share that with our audience. Yeah, sure. I really appreciate you having me. So um, Bringing Hope Home, we're a nonprofit. We're a 501c3 mm -hmm. located in southeastern Pennsylvania in Wayne area. And what we do is we provide emotional and financial support to local families with cancer all types of people with all types of cancer. We pay their household necessity bills. And we were, we were started, we were seated when I went through my cancer journey with my late wife, Nicole. She went through a six and a half year battle with stage four Hodgkin's disease, as you know, um, and passed away in 03. And during that whole journey, uh, we met a lot of wonderful people and really were cared, to, cared for and ministered to by many really wonderful people. We had people from church and from school and from the neighborhood and family and so many good people. And, and what we started to realize when you're in kind of that small world of people going through it, as you know, mm -hmm. you get to talk to everybody and you get to know people almost immediately right. really yeah. well and really in a, in a nice intimate fashion. And what we started to see was there were so many people that didn't have anybody. And not just one or two people, they had nobody. They couldn't get a ride to their, their chemo, they were losing their job, they were losing their car, they were choosing between how do I eat and how do I pay for the heat. And you know, Nicole and I used to say, well, how lucky are we and how blessed are we that we have that, but there's gotta be something we can do. So we started doing a dinner uh, where we would just invite friends that I hadn't seen and we called it, we, called, we invited great guys. So I would see Fran and I would come home and say to Nicole, and our children were young at the time, I'd say, I saw Fran today. Fran's a great guy, and I never get to see her. And Nicole said, stop complaining and go do an event. So we started an event, and we did it for the first eight years for the uh, benefit of the American Cancer Society. We raised half a million dollars in that time period. And the dinner kept growing every year. We did it in conjunction with Coaches Versus Cancer. And it went from 100 guys, men and women, mm -hmm. and raising 13 grand in year one to this year, which is our 15th dinner. Mm -hmm. We're expecting 600 people, and we're going to raise $400,000. So, and then between year seven and eight, one of our guys who had been coming every year passed away, and we heard that his wife had been struggling. So we went to one of our sponsors for the dinner, because all the checks went to the American Cancer Society, and we said to one of our sponsors, said, look, instead of $5,000 for the dinner, write the American Cancer Society a $3,000 check, and give us the two cash, and together we'll give it to this family. And we did, and it made a really big impact on the family, on the donor, on us. And we had an epiphany moment where like, well, there's a lot of people that need this help, so let's start our own charity. And like any, any powerful or successful or fun story, we had no idea what we were doing. So we started, we became incorporated and became a charity in 2008. Mm -hmm. And first year we raised $125,000 and helped 10 families. And this year, which is our ninth year, we're going to raise over 1.8 million and help 750 families. And, you know, I think the only way I can really describe it is, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel really good about that. I, I think I'm where, I'm, I'm where God wants me to be. And, you know, I, for me, from a sanity perspective, it was important for me personally to, to do something to in the beginning, grieve Nicole because mm -hmm. I, I, you know, mm -hmm. she, she was my wife for 12 years. We had two wonderful children, and to lose her was crushing. But at the same time, I learned so much, and we learned so much about that process of going through cancer that it would be sinful not to play it forward mm -hmm. and help other people going through the same thing. And that's really what we do. We don't help patients, we help families. They're our family. I, it's a big I love deal. That. Yeah, I it's a big that. deal to us. You're not allowed to use that P word mm -hmm. in our office. It's a dollar mm -hmm. donation to the jar. And everybody's a family. They're our families. And, and we just crossed two weeks ago, three weeks ago, we just crossed our 3,000th family that we've helped. So we're now at about 3,200 families since we started. And that gets me excited, right? Mm -hmm. So 3,200 families, four people, it's a lot of people. Mm 
-hmm. you know, average mm -hmm. per family, it, it really does a lot for us. Mm -hmm. So passion yes. and purpose. Yes. Um, I'm going to add another P word. Recently, last year, the Pope was here. Yeah. And you had a personal experience yeah. with the Pope. And yeah. Nicole, yeah. share a little bit about that. Yeah, so when you walk into our office uh, in Wayne, there is a picture of Nicole being blessed by Pope, now Saint John Paul II. And when Nicole was um, ill, uh, she passed away August of, thir of 2003. And in May, uh, several friends had gotten together and it took about six months and they had lined up, you know, uh, connections that they had, the connections that other people had, the connections in Rome, the connections, and they called us and said, hey, can you get to Rome? Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I don't know. <laughs> what, what am I going to Rome for? They said, we well, think you can get you blessed, get Nicole blessed by the Pope. And our faith has always been very important to us. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, we'll figure it out. So we ended up going to Rome in May. It was when the Pope had just gotten back from Spain and he was ill. So we were supposed to go out for four days because that's kind of all we could afford at the time. And we ended up um, having to stay an additional three or four days because he had gotten ill and I really wanted to see him. So the Wednesday audience in St. Peter's Square, uh, he blessed. It's really interesting. It's really fascinating. There's thousands and thousands of people. And the uh, guests of honor, which was interesting to me, was the NATO War College was the guest <laughs> of honor. And then on Wednesday, if you show up in your wedding attire, he would bless the newlyweds. Ah. So it was the War College went first to be blessed, which I thought was funny. And then um, the, the newly married couples went second. And then the sick, mm -hmm. of which Nicole was. And, and she was having str uh, struggles getting around at that point. So she was in a wheelchair. So there's this wonderful picture in our office and, and at home of Nicole in a wheelchair. And I'm pushing her and John Paul II blessed her and kissed her ring and very it, it was probably the most powerful 15 seconds of my life because mm. it's not you don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to converse mm -hmm. but yeah it was wonderful and it was all because of great people mm -hmm. great people yeah people and family yeah people, people and, and family. family and you know really the way that I view my responsibility as CEO is it it's my job it's my calling to communicate what we do to good people. Mm -hmm. Because good people want to help, whether it's help having us be on a show that they're mm -hmm. doing, like you're mm -hmm. doing, or, or writing a check, or donating their time or talent to us. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it's my job, it's our job collectively, to let people know what we do and say, hey, if you want to come along, let's make it easy for you to participate. That's and really that. what we do. And I've, I've watched you do that in several ways. Mm -hmm. Coming up in May is one of those dinners. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about yeah. that and how can people get involved if they're so interested? So the, the Great Guy Dinner, which I had mentioned earlier, is how we got started. This is our 15th year. Um, we are having it May 5th, Thursday, May 5th. And they can go to our website, bringinghopehome.org, bringinghopehome.org, and they can sign up, they can donate, they can buy a ticket, they can sponsor the event. We're very excited. It's going to be at the Springfield Country Club in Delaware County, and mm -hmm. it's we've now outgrown three places mm -hmm. over 15 years. So mm -hmm. every year it gets a little bit bigger and a little bit more fun, and it's it's, it's a phenomenal year. My uh, the other co-founder and I, Tim Sherry, who I went to college with, we call it our wedding because <laughs> we just see everybody we haven't seen forever. We we never finish a beer because there's mm -hmm. someone to hug or mm -hmm. see and introduce and connect with. So it's it's exciting. It's it's the best time you'll ever have. Paul, this particular program will be eventually on YouTube and it will air mm -hmm. sort of forever. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is that you're really great about getting volunteers involved at all ages. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about your team and how your vision as a CEO and your mission really touch others who then help you fulfill that mission. It's a really good question. So we are now a team of five full-time, two part-time. Mm -hmm. um, we have ages from 74 to 25. Um, our team has been together now for upwards of, some of us have been there seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And our first employee, Lauren, she runs our director of marketing and, and, and uh, event. Her mom was one of our first families. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, we, we've taken on this plan of building our culture and, and sustaining what we like about our culture. We're very family-oriented oriented towards our culture. Um, and 
when we hire people, they have to have two things. They have to have been touched by cancer in their family. They have to really know what our families mm -hmm. go through because otherwise it wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And they have to want to enjoy their job and it has to be passionate to them. It has to be, it just mm -hmm. has to be. We work too hard and we have too much fun and you have to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So for, as a CEO, what I do is I look for people that have skills other than mine and I look for people that think differently than me and I look for people that are going to test me and push mm -hmm. me and stretch me and make me say, well, why would I do that? And have an answer for us. And I think that that's how you grow and that's how you help. Because one of the things that's really helped us is we don't have to have every great idea. We're okay getting great ideas from other people and, 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 and stretching it to fit us. And um, I think a lot of times I see organizations get so dogmatic whether it's a for-profit or a not because I'm a for-profit guy. I'm a sales right, guy right. Oh, from, from I see it. my beginning. I it. And, yeah. you know, everybody has their way. And I think you limit yourself when you just... Now, there's certain things we will not ever mm -hmm. bend on. Integrity, right. you know, taking care of our families that we help, doing things the right way, enjoying ourselves. We're never going to bend on that. you got to be able to tell the truth and believe and trust. Mm -hmm. But I, I want people that are going to have different ways to achieve the goal. So as we wrap up, wrap up, one of the things I ask people to think about mm -hmm. is that when they focus their energy, um, they can achieve significant results. For you, you've shared family as a focus, mm -hmm. and you've talked about energy and culture, mm -hmm. culture as part of your energy. If you look ahead to the future, what are the significant results that you want to achieve through your organization, bringing hope home? Our, our goal has always been to help 10,000 families a year. Mm -hmm. So right now we're getting ready to step into the 1,000 family a year neighborhood. Uh, so then it becomes, the passion's there, then it becomes systems and process and, and execution of the plan. Uh, I have a very engaged board and a very engaged staff, so we are getting ready to embark on a strategic planning process. It's our second one. It's four years in the making. We just finished our our first strategic plan. We hit every we hit three strategic initiatives, um, and now we're in year four of that. So now it's time to redo it. So we're discussing expansion, recurring mm. revenue stream. Mm. How do we do those things? Um, and it's all about scalability. It really is. And then what keeps me awake at not even awake at night because that sounds like I worry. I just think about it constantly. How do we become sustainable? Mm -hmm. uh, my goal is to get the organization to an area where we're helping five to 10,000 families a year. We're raising $3 million to $5 million a year. And where we have an endowment of, you know, $20 million. And I can then walk away mm -hmm. and leave it better. And I get somebody different in to run it mm -hmm. who has better ideas and can take us from a $20, $30 million organization to a $100 million organization. That's, that's what drives me. And I'm going to do something else. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is significant. It's, it's, I think so. I hope it so. It is. It is. It's fun. It is. It's fun. It's fun. I see it, the smile. God, I see the fun. dimple. I love it. I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> Paul, thanks so much Thank for being you, on our program. This has really been a pleasure. Um, continue to do the work that you do. You do make a difference for families. Thank you. And it's it's really been a pleasure just knowing you personally. It's great seeing and you again. Yeah. Yeah. So, so thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, thanks again for watching Significant TV, where we feature significant stories from significant entrepreneurs and business leaders. I'm Fran McNeil. Thank you.